My name is Yupari and I'd like to welcome you into this week's portrait painting demonstration. And in this week's video, uh, we're going to be covering uh, the topic of what I'd like to call thinking with paint. So we're going to start off with colors. So we're going to try to sculpt the painting out uh, to large masses of color rather than the um, raw umber drawing that I usually do. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off by first listing out the colors on my palette. So I'm using lead white, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, sap green, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. So I'm going to start off by diluting uh, my paint with a little bit of my medium. So my medium that I'm going to be using is just to thin out the paint. So I'm going to be using a combination of uh, one part stand oil to four parts mineral spirits. And you can create that mixture however you like. You can use say a one teaspoon of mineral spirits, or sorry, one teaspoon of stand oil to four teaspoons of mineral spirits if you'd like. So I'm going to use ivory black, a little bit of alizarin crimson, so just those two for now. And I'm using the alizarin crimson just so that I don't have straight black, but I want something that's fairly dark uh, fairly early on. So I'm going to be using just these two colors to rough in the value for the background. And since we're going to be trying to build this painting with large masses of color, it's going to be pretty important to uh, cover as quickly as possible. And you'll see that uh, you can construct the painting and the drawing just by using large shapes of color and value. So right now I just have a little abstract shape here. Uh, for where I think or where I believe that the beard is going to go. So again, I'm going to be using a fair amount of paint, so a lot of paint going into this mixture. We just have just a basic shape, and that's going to be indicating to me where I think the large mass or the light, the large light masses are going to fit. And it's important in the beginning to try and cover the entire surface and try to make sure that you have the entire composition worked out from each of the four corners of the picture. You want to know, say, the shoulder comes out to here, the neck may be over here, and then the other shoulder comes down over here. So fairly early on, you really want to cover the entire uh, surface, and you really want to understand where all the shapes are going to fit in relation to the uh, canvas or the panel that you're working on. So now that I have the background kind of uh, masked in there, I'm going to mix up some colors now for the light masses. So I'm going to be switching to a different brush here. And I'm going to use a little more of my medium. So remember that medium is that medium is one part stand oil to four parts mineral spirits. So I'm going to use it to dilute a little bit of the paint. So let's start off with a basic flesh tone. And so uh, my two favorite colors to mix uh, lately has been Alizarin crimson and sap green. So I'm just going to mix the two. I'm going to use a lot of paint. And now I'm going to go back into the lead white. Now, see, that's too red. So it's getting somewhere close to a flesh tone, but that would be way too red. So a little more of the sap green into the mixture. And now we have something that's kind of close to a flesh tone. And kind of close is the keyword. 
So what I'm trying to do here is make a mixture of color that is a little bit darker in value and a little bit warmer in hue so that it leaves me room to either make my colors lighter or make the values darker. So this entire mass here now is going to fit uh, for the light side of the face. So uh, I'm just getting an idea of, say, this is the corner of the forehead. Then this comes down. Not really sure, but I'm still trying to get an idea of where things are going to fit. Now I can go back and forth between the background brush and the flesh tone brush. So suppose that I did want the forehead to fit there. See now how I can construct the outside shape uh, with the with the color. So let's see here. Now I'm going to switch to a different brush. So I kind of have a brush per region of the painting. So I have now I'm going to use this brush for the uh, shadow tones on the side here. So let's use raw umber and a little bit of yellow ochre and some alizarin crimson. So I'm trying to mix up this shadow color. So this shadow note here. Uh, so I really I want to squint down to get an idea of the shape of the shadow. But I want to blur my eyes to get an idea of the color of the shadow. So it appears pretty warm to me. So I mean, it's not as warm as the flesh tone. So I'm kind of relating this color to this color. And we're going to be constructing the, uh, the painting in this kind of fashion through uh, these large color masses and color relationships. So while I have this shadow tone color down, let's use it to uh, do a little bit of construction. So it's important at this stage to go in there with as much force as possible. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Oil paint is very forgiving. It's an extremely forgiving medium and that it takes a while for it to dry and so it allows you that uh, it allows you a very long amount of time to work and to figure out where you want to place things. So let's put in a dark mass here for the nose and then just a little dark mass here uh, for the axes of the eyes. Something very simple like that just kind of gives me an idea. Uh, say I want the axes of the eyes to fit here and the axes of the nose to fit here gives me an idea of where I want my shapes to fit. Now then, covering the entire surface is pretty important right now. So I'm going to switch to a different brush. And that brush, this brush is going to be for these uh, shadow regions for the hair mass. So raw umber, ivory black, maybe a little bit of cobalt teal. Just these two. So let's see. Let's see what this color looks like. So I got to squint and stand back or sit back and then see which value is darker. So is this value darker or is this value darker? Not entirely sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, place down the paint. And then that uh, distinction should become more clear. So let's see, just covering the masses, covering and covering. And we want to work with simple shapes. Now we're going to be thinking with paint. So we're going to be constructing uh, with large shapes of uh, paint. And I usually don't work like this. I usually, uh, have you seen my previous videos, I usually spend a good amount of time trying to figure out the linear drawing. Uh, with just the raw umber. So this is very different uh, to how I usually work. But I show you this is it's another way of approaching uh, simple masses. And these simple masses are abstract 
by nature. So that's kind of what makes them difficult because when we look at a portrait of someone, we think of uh, we think of the details. Usually, we think of eyelashes, eyebrows, and things like that. And even when we're doing a linear drawing, we think of uh, the little curvature or the eyelid or where exactly the nose fits. So it's kind of counterintuitive to look at a realist approach to painting uh, via abstract shapes. A little counterintuitive. So now with the brush that I used for this shadow shape, I'm going to be placing in uh, very quickly now a light mass for the beard. So I'm going to squint down, stand back, and I see that this shape comes out here. This comes down here. Now I'm going to switch to the uh, the brush that I had for the background tone. So this is where some of the thinking with paint is going to start to happen. So now I'm switching back and forth uh, between these brushes to get this outside shape. So the nose comes down to about here. Don't worry about the aesthetics. I'm telling you, don't worry about the aesthetics of your painting too early on. And that is kind of a tendency that uh, many portrait artists have. I certainly have this tendency to, uh, especially when I'm working with a group of artists, to try and make the painting look uh, really human really quickly. And that can be kind of a hindrance. Um, sometimes it's easier and more efficient to forget about the fact that we're painting a human being. Let's just forget about uh, the fact that we're painting somebody that we may know, a close relative, a really close friend. And instead, let's just look at these shapes. See, look at the shape one. We have one, two, three, and it cuts back in there. And it's important to keep things simple and easy for you to understand. Understanding a series of simple shapes uh, such as these can go a long, can take you a long way towards understanding even more complicated shapes. So again, I'm just looking at this entire mass here, this entire large mass, and I'm not trying to look any further beneath the surface than what is presented in front of me. I'm just trying to observe what information is evident to me at a glance and then place it down. Uh, now, keeping track of all these brushes can be kind of a challenge. So, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if you accidentally uh, use a different brush or you mix up brushes. It's just kind of a, a way to save time just by having the brushes handy that you need. So, now I'm going to be just with single brush strokes trying to. Uh, further solidify this shape here. So here we have a little dark here for the eyebrow. And it's going to be important to try and understand the painting in terms of simple brush strokes. And I don't really talk about the brush stroke too much, uh, the art of the brush stroke, but a lot there's a lot of power in doing something like this and like this. Then kind of dabbing at it like that, like, ah, maybe it's like this, maybe it's like that. No, it might be better off to go in there with intention. Be bold with it. And even if you're wrong, be very wrong. And then when the time comes to make those corrections, those corrections will be much more obvious to you than if you're just kind of afraid and feeling your way around and Maybe it's there, maybe it's not there. Just be bold with it. So let's see. Uh, I see a little more of a cool tone down here, a, a cooler color. 
and dilute it a little bit more. I'm really trying to get these color masses to work and so that I can sculpt with these color masses. So again, it's very light, but again, it's not bright white either. So it's so light, it's very deceptive. I can't really put my foot on what value it is. And to be honest, these brushes are kind of confusing me. So let's say this is the one for the shadow tone. So again, let's use raw umber, a little bit of a lizard and crimson, maybe some sap green. Just a simple shape here. Now, the uh, dark mass here for the hair, I was using the same brush that I used for this light region, which might not have been a good idea. Maybe I should have had a different brush for that, but it's all good. I'm just using the same brush here. Just added some more cobalt teal, trying to get a feel for this side of the beard. And the idea here, the whole premise behind this is that um, oil paint in particular stays wet for a very long time. So it kind of gives you that freedom to construct with color rather than um, trying to figure out an outline. Sometimes it's better to just see the big picture in terms of large color masses and constructing the forms from there. Not always the case. Now sometimes you're going to want to uh, look at the linear construct and spend a long time with the linear construct before uh, getting into the large color notes. And that's all right. It is all right. I think it's important to explore every avenue that you possibly can uh, with painting. I think it's a good idea to have many approaches. And then ultimately, you'll find one that works for you. That's just something that I like to do. I like to explore uh, different ways of doing things. So the ear, I'm just going to figure out, try and figure out where it is with just a single brush stroke, one for the side, and then one, maybe one for the top, so really just two brush strokes. And with this same dark, I'm going to go ahead and place that dark uh, for the eyebrow, and then a little dark up here. Now I'm going to go back in with the uh, background color, add a little bit more ivory black and some ultramarine blue, and let's get this dark now. It's a little dark for the uh, clothing that the model is wearing. Maybe this comes out to about here. Let's see how very quickly we can have an image. It's only been about maybe 20 minutes and we already have all of our big shapes in there. So we already have a pretty good idea of the big picture. And now the paint is going to stay wet for us. So the paint is going to allow us now to construct the accuracy or the more specific shapes on top of these large and general shapes. So I'm just adding just a little bit more light here to the beard. Maybe some warmth. Let's add some warmth to this side. Let's add a little half tone here. So let's switch back to the, the brush that was intended uh, for the shadow tone. So I'm going to be using 
raw umber, alizarin crimson, and some sap green. So let's see. You really want to make sure to stand back, make a brush stroke, and then stand back. Hold the brush from the end. I'm pretty much at an arm's length away from uh, my painting. So let's see. I have a little dark note here. And this comes down to about here. This comes down here. See, so now we're slowing down. So now we're really trying to uh, observe the accuracy of these shapes. And oil paint is a very wonderful medium and it allows us the freedom to work in this kind of way. Now I can't even remember which brush that I used for the uh, light masses, so let's go ahead and switch to a smaller brush now. So I'm going to take this in. So now I'm going to take my time and try and figure out the simple patterns of light and dark. So I'm pretty much just going to be taking from the same mixture that's right here. And I'm just going to take my time now to uh, draw the light and dark patterns with the paint. So there's a little shadow here. This comes down to here. And there's actually a little bit more of the beard. So let's use the cobalt teal. So this comes actually a little bit higher up. And it's important to sit back and squint down. Sit back or stand back when you're seeing, when you're trying to observe these shapes. Paint what you see when you're squinting. And try not to add anything that really isn't there or anything that isn't blatantly obvious to you. I'm going to use a different brush now just to get some light plane. So I just added a little bit of cadmium yellow to this mixture. So there's a little plane of light there that should be accounted for just a little bit. And then a little plane right here. But nothing more than that. So I'm bouncing my eye back and forth, and I'm really trying to get an idea of the way that these shapes are fitting. And I'm trying to get an idea of what it all looks like from the distance. So this here, I'm missing kind of a, uh, a half tone that I could put in there. So this half tone I'm mixing up now onto this area of the palette. Um, using pretty much this sap green on top of these mixtures that were already on the palette. So there's a little little half tone here. So there lives a little half tone right there. And then another half tone right about here as we get closer and closer to the shadow. So the light the flesh tones, as we travel closer and closer uh, to the shadow, are going to be getting darker. And that is because each plane is starting to face the light even less. So let's go ahead and put in that half tone there. And again, let's make sure that we don't lose our light and shadow delineation. Those so the delineation between light and shadow is going to really be vital. It's going to be something that we never want to lose. So I still see some little cooler notes around here. It's important to sit back or stand back when you're doing this. Make a brush stroke. Sit back and then see how it fits with the entire picture. Let's see, so I'm going to switch to the background brush, and I see that this shape might need to come back a little further. So, with the ivory black and the ultramarine blue, let's go ahead and put another wash or another layer right onto this. Let's see, this cuts back a little further. 
so I'm kind of missing some of that area of the hair. But let's just take the brush. Without even cleaning it, I'm just trying to apply this shape. So this comes a little further down here. And I tell you what, there's a little bit of a cooler note existing back here. So a little bit of cobalt teal wouldn't hurt. So let's add some cobalt teal to this area here. And again, I really want to make sure that that value doesn't get confused with any of the values in the light. That's going to be most important. Now let's use the, uh, the brush for the background. Why not? Because it's already dark. And let's pull a little bit more of a shape right here. And while we have this background mixture, after standing back, I see that I could probably use a little bit of light here. So there's a little more light there. So maybe let's use some let's use some cadmium orange. Get a little crazy here. So some cadmium orange. I see a lot of warmth right here. And then as I'm seeing that, I see that this shape here could use just a little more refinement. So this comes in like this, goes in like this. Maybe we have a little a glimpse of an eye emerging there. And then this cuts in a little more here. So while I'm still trying to work out that shape, I'm going to go in with uh, a different brush now, uh, just so that I don't have to clean another brush. So let's use a little bit of cadmium red with the white. And uh, I should have said earlier, I should note, if you want to know exactly which paints I'm using, what brands, or anything like that, uh, just look in the description box below, and I will have all of that information typed up for you. So I'm going to be using the alizarin crimson. So let's make a warmer note right about here. So I'm going to make a vertical gesture and I see that there's a warmer note right about there. So I'm making a brush stroke and I'm standing back, or I'm sitting back trying to see how these shapes fit. And this comes down. So this shape of the nose needs to cut in a little more. Maybe to about there. Still not entirely sure. Cuts in like that. And then we have the. So I'm going to clean this brush off. We want to construct a little more specificity into the light and dark patterns, especially over here. So I clean it off. So I use the mineral spirits to clean off the brush and then dab it dry on some paper towel. So I use the mineral spirits to clean off the brush, but I use my uh, stand oil and mineral spirits mixture to thin out the paint. All right, so I see a little bit, a little more light over here. Let's make it a little warmer, so a little more cadmium red. I'm seeing a little more light here. Then this cuts in over in this direction. Now, one of the uh, challenges in working in this fashion, where we're trying to construct the, uh, the planes and the uh, linear structure of the painting with these large masses of color, one of the challenges is going to be that when Things are wrong, they're really wrong, especially uh, when you're painting in this way. And so you're going to have to have a little bit of patience uh, because it, something may be wrong in a linear drawing or say in a raw umber construct, um, but it doesn't look so bad and it doesn't look so off. But when we are constructing in this kind of fashion with large masses of color, 
it becomes more volumetric. So we're we're seeing more of a three-dimensional rendition. So we're kind of drawing in three dimensions. And so when something is off, like I had to cut that area of the forehead a little bit. So when it's off, it's really off. You can tell almost right away. So you can see that kind of as a disadvantage in that you may get discouraged. Or you can take a more positive outlook and see that, yes, even though I have something off and it looks really off, I'm thankful that it looks really off because I'd rather know that something is wrong in such a way that I can figure out how to fix it. It's really not that easy sometimes uh, to see an error in a linear drawing or to see an error in a uh, raw umber drawing. But when you're drawing like this with color, these mistakes can become much more evident. So we have a little more light right about there. So now that we have our large shapes of color established and we have some kind of a rough idea of where the features are going to fit, uh, let's switch to some smaller brushes here. So I have some size one round brushes. I'm going to start to add a little bit more depth into these forms now. So I have a, uh, let's say a dark brush and a light brush. So I'm going to take a little bit of cobalt teal into this puddle here. And so I have a very distinct corner here now for uh, the corner of the side of the mustache. So a single brush stroke time. So here, here. And there we have the corner of the mustache. And it's important to be honest with yourself. Oftentimes uh, we'll place a brush stroke down and feel like it's in the right place, but it's really not. And sometimes we kind of just want to stick with our story that we have. So Maybe this brush stroke needs to come down a little bit further like this. I don't know, but I need to have the honesty uh, within myself to say, hey, I put this down. It's in the wrong place, but that's okay. I can come back in and change it. So it's important to keep things very workable, especially in this kind of stage where maybe this, I can, I can easily move the shape a little bit higher up or a little bit lower down. So let's see here. I think that's about where I want the corner of that shape to fit. So now I'm going to go down to this darker area, or this darker puddle. And so I tell you what, it's important to to try and build the structure or try to build the uh, volume of your portrait or whichever subject you're working on uh, through describing the way that light rolls across the form. So the light is turning so that it's getting darker as we approach the, uh, the darker shapes. So it's important to have a good understanding or to convey a, a good understanding of how the light is terminating into the shadow. So let's try and uh, create some more depth through the darks. So here we have a little dark here. And it's pretty warm, so I'm going to be using cadmium red uh, with ivory black and maybe a little bit of alizarin. So that's a pretty good dark over here. And it may need a little more cadmium red. And try to economize every single brush stroke. I mean now I'm starting to pat down so that means that I'm uh, kind of fiddling around with this shape too much. I need to be more direct. Here we have a shape. And it goes down there. Try and be as deliberate with these shapes as you can. So now I have, I have to stand back. Maybe this dark needs to come out just a little further out there. Not really sure. Let's take some of this. Color here. 
Uh, so after standing Mac, I see that maybe I need to describe this light here now. So I'm going to be using the other brush. So this is still a size one round brush. Uh, but notice the tape on this brush. So I kind of try and distinguish a light brush from a dark brush. Just so that I kind of save time in terms of not having to clean off the paint off the brush as often. So here we have uh, this light plane here for the wing of the nose. It makes a very definitive shape there. So now I'm going to go, let's say, a little bit of cadmium yellow into this mixture. Why not? Let's see, standing back or sitting back, let's see. The shape comes down to about there. Then it gets a little bit warmer, so a little more cadmium red. It's a little warmer down here. And then much darker as it approaches the bottom of the nose. See how we're creating kind of the curvature of that area of the nose just by describing uh, the way the light is terminating across the form. A little more. Still a darker shape here, so after sitting back, let's see. Cuts into about there. Add a little more cadmium red. Add about there. And so now after sitting back, I see that I need a little more of a shape here. So this is how we're going to build more of the specificity of the shape now. So let's make a vertical gesture here. So what lies above this shape here? So we have a darker half tone there. So let's switch to uh, one of the larger brushes here. And uh, let's take a little bit of sap green into this mixture here. Maybe a little bit of cadmium orange. Let's try to see this as simply as possible. So there's a little dark shape that comes up there. Just a little darker there. And then I'm going to use the other brush for the light mixture, so a little more of the lead white. And so if you're wondering why I'm using lead white, and so lead white is a transparent white, so it kind of allows you to use more of it uh, without losing the uh, intensity of the pigment. But if I were doing something like a still life painting or a plein air painting, where I might want more opaque mixture, depending of course on the still life and the landscape, uh, then I would use something more of like a uh, opaque white, like a titanium white. So let's see, there's a light right there. So we're trying to construct the painting to a series of deliberate brush marks. Things about there. Those about there. And we want to keep the painting as simple and easy for you to understand so that when the time comes to make little changes like that, that they're easy and simple to understand. I want this to be fun. The worst thing, I'll tell you, the worst thing that can happen in painting is that you end up hating the process. That's the worst thing that can happen. And so let's enjoy the process. A little more light here. And so I'm going to use a little more cadmium orange, a little more of the lead white. Maybe a touch of the cadmium red. Let's get this light plane here. Might need a little more cadmium red. I'm really squinting down to see what is the most essential bits of information to describe the form and to describe the uh, impact that this image has. see here. So there's a very definitive light plane here. And of course there's the glasses, the shape of the glasses here. So 
That's going to come in shortly. It'll be a little more light down here. Not entirely sure. But I do see that there's still more of a, a warmth that I'm missing there. So again, let's just go overboard with the cadmium red. Just add a little more cadmium red now. Try to make a deliberate brush stroke. Might be too deliberate. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more of this dark here. Let's just let these two puddles mix. Why not? This shape right there. And I still I might be pushing that too much, so I'm gonna get some of this pool color here. Try to bring down the intensity of that red. So squinting down is going to really help me simplify the shapes here. So now I see that there's still a little bit of warmth here that I'm missing. So let's use some alizarin crimson into these um, values that were already here on the palette. Maybe a little more cadmium red. Let's see how that works. Now I need a little more light. So let's add just more of the lead white and the cadmium red. Very deliberate brush stroke there. Let's see how that fits. It might be fitting, it might not be fitting. I don't know, I have to sit back. It's really important to stand back. I cannot stress that enough. And let's not stress out about anything. I'm just trying to figure out what are the most essential bits of information here? So let's let's add this half tone. There's more of a little half tone there. So let's just add a little bit of cadmium orange onto this area of the palette. So notice how the palette's kind of going from the light to the dark here, sort of. Uh, so that kind of organization on the palette uh, hopefully will translate to the painting. few deliberate brush marks there. Let's try to get that half tone. And then over here it's a little lighter, so let's just put some of this paint a little lighter over there. Now there's some subtlety here that I need to describe. So I'm working my way up to the uh, smaller shape. So I'm going to be working my way towards the smaller shapes and see the eyes and all of that. Now I know I put some information into the nostril, but I'll be working my way towards those smaller shapes. I'm really trying to look at the uh, structure of the face and construct it kind of like a sculptor would. Let's see, a little darker over here. I still kind of see that that beard still cutting a little higher up there. So let's see, this comes, maybe it does come up a little bit lighter here. And then we're receiving more, a little more light here. I have to sit back, I'm gonna hold a straight line here. So I see that maybe a switch to the background colors. Maybe this needs to cut in here a little bit. Cut some like that. Let's get some of the warmth here that's missing there. So now let's switch to, let's see, let's find a brush with some flesh tone on it. So let's use this one. Get some cadmium red and some lead white, maybe a yellow ochre here. There's some warmth here that I haven't described yet. It's important to try and see it as a series of shapes. Now I know that there's a mouth existing there somewhere. Uh, within the beard, so I want to be careful not to be so deliberate and paint 
a mouth that I may not see. Instead, I'm really trying to reason with the shapes that are being presented in front of me and make decisions based on uh, the way these shapes look in relation to one another. So that is, there's a little light glimpse right there and then even right here. They may not make sense. It may not make sense why there's a light area right there. It may not be evident, but that you observe it and you place it down and you relate it to the shapes around, that's what will give the painting kind of a naturalistic look. A little more light there. Just have fun with it. Simple little brush stroke. I'll stand back, see if this might come in. I'm going to squint down again. And I see that this can still get lighter. So I'm going to use more of the lead white. And I thinned out the paint a little bit more with my medium. My stand oil paint thinner medium. So let's just drive the bristles into this. Squinting down while painting this, trying to paint exactly what I see when I'm squinting. I'm trying to paint uh, a way that I'm trying to paint in such a way that I'm recording how I perceive what I'm looking at, rather than uh, I'm not trying to copy what I'm looking at. It may be tempting to think that I'm trying to copy this down, but I'm really not. I'm trying to paint the visual experience what it's like to see these shapes in front of me. Press in a little further, something like that. Or maybe even more light. It's crazy how much light I'm seeing there. Cuts in right about there. And while I'm doing this, I can also, of course, add some light planes. So this plane I'm deliberately making lighter. Now I'm conceptualizing the beard, so I'm conceptualizing it in terms of planes turning into uh, away from the light. So that's why I'm making certain shapes like this one right here. So this is one plane that's catching more light, and then it's catching less light over here, and then even less light over here. So with a little less pressure, I'm creating a darker value there. To try to create kind of the illusion of the form. Maybe some cobalt teal. Really like cobalt teal. It's a very nice blue. It's a nice middle blue, really. Let's push some of the cooler notes that we see here. Let's push them. So what if you don't see it that blue? It's more fun to try and push the color sometimes than it is to perfectly try and color match what you're seeing in front of you. Be bold with it. A little brush stroke there. So now I'm going to switch back to that um, dark mixture. So let's do Ultramarine blue, ivory black, so we have let's see, some more dark shape up here. Just cuts in like that. That may have, let's see, that may have gone too high. Not sure. Not sure at all. I gotta sit back and then relate each of these shapes to one another. So I think that's still alright. Uh, now it's up to me whether I want to put that little glimpse of light back there. So I'm going to hold off on putting that little orangey glimpse of light there until the end. If I really want to put that in there, I will. Alright, so let's use some more ultramarine blue. So let's push some of these color differences. And let's try and not lose the distinction between the light and shadow. Important thing to note. Let's see. I'm trying to be more deliberate with my application of paint. 
So I'm trying to do less of this and more of that single brush notes. Trying to be very deliberate here. Something like that. Let's see. This one out. So back to the dark brush. Let's use a little more alizarin. And let's see. Um, the sharpest edge would be maybe about there. And then it would get progressively a little softer down here. So I'm letting some of the paint kind of blend with the uh, paint that's on the brush. It almost looks like I'm painting in slow motion, but I'm just trying to very carefully get this edge to work with just a single brush stroke. Not sure if I can do that, but very much trying to do so. Something like that. Now this edge is going to be softer kind of by default because the hair, of course, kind of fuzzes out. Uh, but even though it all looks kind of uniform and soft, let's still vary some of these edges. So let's let this corner be sharper. And then this corner right up here be softer. Let's just put some variation into the edges. All right, so now let's put in some more specificity into these shapes here. So I'm switching back to the size one round brushes. And so let's use some more of the lead white and the cadmium red. Add a little more specificity now. So there's a very distinct light shape right there. Try to be deliberate with these brush marks. All right. and, and that kind of follows through right about here. Again, I'm trying to be as deliberate as possible with each single, each and every brush stroke. So here's the brush for the dark of the background, and I'm going to add some sap green into the mixture. Uh, so this dark shape for the eyebrow going to be very important in trying to get the likeness of the model. So this dark shape here, I to make sure not to forget it. And, uh, and I got to sit back and see, I may have overdone that. So let's uh, go ahead and fix that. So this, I'm taking a brush that I already had before uh, with the half tone mixture. Just pushing it down. See how forgiving oil paint is? All right, so let's see. I'm going to add, I'm going to switch to a different brush now. So there's going to be a lighter shape here. And just to about there. So back to the size one rounds. So let's take some of this value and then just make it a little bit more greenish by adding the sap green. And this cuts down. Single brush stroke time. So it cuts down like that. And that may be too dark. So probably not single brush stroke time. Maybe it's just a couple brush strokes. Right there. Trying to get that shape to work. Now that value is pretty dark. But it's not in shadow, so I got to be very particular about that. And then there's a light plane here that should be accounted for. So I'm going to clean off that brush um, with the mineral spirits and then dab it dry on the paper towel. And so let's see what color can exist there. Maybe if the color is too tricky for me to figure out, let's just take uh, something off the palette, place it down, and then go from there. So it might need a little bit more uh, cadmium red. So this shape cuts in like that. And this comes out right about there. And this right here is the uh, 
the tear duct, but it's kind of being covered by the glasses, or maybe the shadow of the glasses, not really sure. So now switching back to the other size one round, uh, the shadow brush. So now I'm going to add some sap green onto this mixture here. And then we have, let's see, let's use a vertical, or sorry, a horizontal line now. Horizontal line, and I'm closing one eye. Helps to close one eye when you're trying to see either a vertical or a horizontal. So let's see, uh, these are almost plumb. Meaning they're almost matching up perfectly on a uh, vertical. So here's a dark now. Dark here for the iris. And then there's going to be a little cooler value here for the sclera. So let's just take some of this off. A little cooler value here for the sclera. You can barely see it, it's hardly there. So let's not make anything up that isn't there. We barely see it there, and let's paint it like we barely see it there. So let's take some of this color here. And now we have the uh, corner of the upper eyelid. Single brush stroke time, and maybe not really. There you go. Single brush stroke time there. So now let's do some corrections onto the shape of the nose. Uh, so I have to sit back. So with the uh, size one round, the dark brush, I'm going to add a little bit more ivory black into that. I did the best I could to make this uh, outside shape work with the single brush stroke, but uh, that cannot be done right now. So let's just use the side one round. So it cuts further into here. So let's stand back and see how that works. It might be working, I'm not, not sure yet. I think the problem is I'm describing too much here with this eye. I mean, I can barely see that. Barely see it. So let's see, let's stand back. And uh, let's figure this out. It's a puzzle. Let's think about it as a puzzle. Let's not worry about trying to create a picture of someone instead. Let's think about a puzzle. So let's see, let's make that cut in a little more. We have a shape going in like this, and out like that. Just thinking about it like a puzzle. So I made a decision to move that further in. I have to sit back and see how that fits. Let's see. And I may need a little more light here. Uh, for the nose, the light on the nose. So let's use some, some more lead white and some more cadmium orange. Maybe some glycerin. Let's take some of the mixture that's already on here on the bottom. So let's try and close one eye. I try to close an eye to look at a corner, really. All right, so I see maybe Maybe there's a little more light here that's not being described too well. And then this cuts in right here. I try to picture where the light's coming from. It's coming from this kind of angle and hitting his nose almost directly right there. Giving us this light here. A little more cadmium red. Here. I think that's starting to correct the problem. I'm not so sure. So I'll tell you what. If you're not sure of one area of your painting, move on to another area and then come back to it. So let's go and look at these shapes now. So I'm actually going to just put in uh, something for the glasses. So I'm going to go with a little bit of sap green onto this mixture here and let's make I'm going to rest my pinky on here now uh, so here's where I think that the uh, bottom of the glasses will go 
and then the corner. Get a little more dark in here. And this goes maybe about here. So with the glasses, I'm really looking at the corners. A little dark shape right there. And then some more dark here for this area. And then I'm going to switch to the light brush and I'm going to take uh, some cobalt spill into this mixer. So the highlight of the glasses, a little highlight right there. Is this paint what we see when we're squinting? When I'm squinting, I definitely see that highlight. And I definitely see a highlight here. So the corner of the other side of the glasses. It's really magical when you can get the effect of glasses with maybe like five brush strokes. It's insane what you can do with just a few simple brush strokes. A little light for the other corner of the glasses right here. So that's another brush stroke. And then let's take some of this ultramarine blue. And there's just a little glimpse here. Very subtle, almost non-existent when I'm squinting. So let's see here, this area gets a little darker. See how simply we can get the effect of glasses with just a few brush strokes. So now of course the glasses have to be supported by something, right? So there's a little mark right here. Let's just let it go right there. Very simply. Now, I exaggerated the angle of that, and that's all right. Uh, this actually, let's see, it's very strange. I don't actually, I can't really make sense of what's going on with the angle of the glasses there, but I'm just going to go with my gut. I'm going to just say, Comes to about there. Why not? And now, of course, we have the cast shadow of the glasses. So let's take some uh, cobalt teal. Some cobalt teal onto this area right here. And we have this cast shadow being projected from the bottom of the glasses. Single brush stroke time. So that's the cast shadow. And then after placing that in there, I see that this shape may need a little work. So let's just take some of this that's already on here. There's a darker shape right here. There's a corner of the eye right there. And then this cuts in even more, actually. And then this goes out in this kind of fashion and let's push the warmth right there so more alizarin why not push the warmth here cuts in like that so let's just take some of the uh, paint from this area here to make a lighter color and this will be our dark light and let's try to paint it in there with a single brush stroke and so this is the value in the light that just before you reach the shadow and it's going to be the most important one in terms of creating the curvature of the form and it's really wonderful when it works it takes a couple tries really to get that value a value that's just about to reach the shadow so now that I've placed that in there, I see that perhaps I might uh, be able to figure out now what's going on with the nose. Uh, so I see, so I'm going to clean off the uh, size one round brush with the light mixture. Take a fair amount of uh, lead white here and some yellow ochre and a tad bit of cadmium red. So I see now that I may be missing some of the width 
of this area on the nose. So a little more light here will give us more of the width. Hopefully that will help. Sometimes you have to just make a decision, stand back, or even better yet, uh, take a break, take a lunch break or something. Then you may come back and then the answers will be right there in front of you. A little bit more paint right here. And so now another very useful thing to do that I um, oftentimes don't mention is to use one of these. So this is a uh, just a mirror. It's a piece of glass that I bought from an arts and craft store. I just put some uh, tape around it. So what you can do with a mirror is uh, close one eye and look at your painting, just a reflection of your painting. And uh, so what happens is sometimes you'll see through the reflection something that's jumping out. And uh, to me, I think something that's jumping out is the beard, that the beard is still too much of a uh, kind of like a chop. It needs to have a little more uh, subtlety, maybe just smoothening some if that's even a word, just making some of the edges more smooth. And then maybe a little glimpse of light, that little orangey light in the background. So the mirror helps you see uh, kind of from a different perspective, uh, as opposed to just looking at the painting as it is the entire time. Another thing you can do is also take a photograph of the painting and then turn it into um, black and white. That can also help you see from a different kind of perspective of what your painting looks like. So let's apply some of the uh, changes that the uh, portrait would need. So I see that this is still too much of a chop. So let's, uh, let's get the background color. So remember the background is just ivory black and alizarin crimson. So let's, uh, maybe some ultramarine blue, why not? So let's push this up a little bit. Okay, so what I think that's going on is this still looks too much like, like clay. Like a just clay, a slice of clay. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just soften this edge. And oftentimes with uh, facial hair, it can be kind of tricky. It can seem kind of tricky, but the solutions are oftentimes very simple. So let's just take some of this color here, maybe add some cobalt teal. And let's just make this value. So let's try and make the edge uh, smoother by applying a transitioning value. Even if we can't see it, we know that it's there, that there's some kind of transitioning value here as the, uh, these areas of the beard start to uh, turn further and further away from the light. And let's just let some of the, uh, the edges here just disappear into the dark. So switching between both brushes, hopefully I will get that kind of uh, smooth transition. Just switching between the two brushes. And this area will most definitely be the most smooth edge throughout the entire picture. So I have to make sure I can make it as smooth as I possibly can. Almost impossibly smooth. Then of course it, it seems like it gets a little sharper up here and then even sharper up here and that's kind of an aesthetic thing. I kind of just like the way that angle looks but that could be adding to that kind of chop like looking like it's uh, too much like chopped clay. Uh, so let's just add a little more variety to this curve here. This comes up here maybe a little bit like that. Just a little bit more of a nuance to that curve. Let's take some more of this dark here. 
let's add just a little more of the transitioning value here. Just be careful not to blend it to death. I think it's better that it looks structurally kind of like a chop than an overly blended kind of cloud. So let's just make sure to preserve some of the planes um, that are existing here on two beard. So let's move on to the light that is missing in the background. That light that I was talking about that I would decide whether or not to put it in a little orangey light there. And I think it kind of Kind of needs just a little glimpse of light here and maybe some light there. Alright, so what am I going to do now? I'm going to compare this light uh, to this light. So let's let's work with the colors in relation to one another rather than trying to label specifically uh, what this color is. So it, it's very red. It's fairly red and it's not bright red. So I'm going to use a, let's see, I'm going to use cadmium red and some yellow ochre. Just cadmium red and yellow ochre, maybe a touch of alizarin crimson. And I'm mixed on top of this little puddle that was existing there on purpose. Uh, because that puddle was kind of like a light gray. So that kind of helps cut down on the uh, saturation of this mixture. So squinting down, I see that this value uh, is a little darker. So let's make a little note here. And that might be too light. So let's use some alizarin crimson. And again, oil paint is so forgiving. It's so nurturing and forgiving. It, it allows you to do something like that. And it's not going to dry on you. It's, it's going to wait for you. It's going to be there and wait for you to come back and apply the right mixture. So let's try it again. That's a little bit closer. It might be too saturated. So let's make it less saturated and a little darker by adding some raw umber. So the value itself is uh, darker than the flesh tones. And I have to squint down at the, um, the image to see that. So I'm going to make it even darker now. And I'm going to be, i uh, tell you what, I'm going to be using the background mixture as well. Kind of uh, working the background color with this color. And it's just a little tiny glimpse of light, but even the tiniest glimpse of light uh, needs to be somewhat uh, understood. So I'm going to sit far back. And I think that that value is about correct. I'm not entirely sure if it is the right value, but I'm just going to go with it. And go all the way. Yeah, I'm going to close one eye and make a horizontal. And uh, see that it might need to move up this shape. Single brush stroke time. So let's see. Something about. in here. So I need it to move up a little bit and I'm just kind of comparing it to his eyebrows. It's a little bit higher up on a horizontal. So let's make this appear like a single brush stroke. Let's do that by pulling the paint in the same direction. So just like this, pressing down, trying to get all of the bristles and letting it go. Let less pressure, less pressure, and then that's it. All right, so now I see a little tiny, tiny, minuscule glimpse of light here. And so I'm going to add just some cadmium red and a little more raw umber, but more cadmium red. Let's paint that in there. Just a tiny glimpse of light here. The smallest bit of light. And then back to the background mixture. So the ivory black. And the alizarin crimson. So let's just paint that dark in there. It's fairly flat, almost non existent, almost like another dimension. And then, of course, there is a cast shadow here that is 
a little warmer. So let's just use the same brush uh, that I was using for the background and let's just make this a little bit warmer. I'm gonna just add more alizarin crimson to it and just alizarin crimson. Let's let this be just like that simple little brush stroke there. And let's let this carry all the way down here. So I make a big decision like that and then I have to sit back or stand back and see how it fits with the overall design of the picture. And of course I'm leaving a vignette here. And a vignette is an area that you leave unfinished in order to kind of complement the areas that are more finished. So I'm actually going to add a little more ultramarine blue. And I'm going to just let some little brush strokes show. I'm going to dilute the paint a little bit with my medium. So I'm going to let some of these brush strokes show. Thinking about the calligraphy of the painting right now. So I'm going to let some of those brush strokes show and create a little shape like this. And then let this area be, oh, maybe I want to do something like this. So I'm going to let this area be, then I'm going to go and fill in the rest of the uh, color for the background. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue, ivory black, alizarin crimson. So let's just fill this in now the rest of the background, the rest of the dark of the background. And this is kind of an aesthetic decision that I'm leaving these areas a little uh, less finished. I kind of, I like paintings that do that, like paintings that have areas of, uh, areas that still kind of show the process. I don't know, it's just more interesting to me. And of course that is a, um, a relative term. It's just more interesting to me to see something that's kind of left unfinished like that, rather than um, every part of the picture being finished to the same kind of uh, degree. Maybe, just maybe, let's just add the warmth in here. So there's just a little more warmth that, that needs to go into here. So let's use the a little more cadmium red. And just a little more warmth here. And this light here is probably going to distract me. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cover that whole area now. Again, I'm really just thinking of the design of the picture and the way that the picture looks at a distance. I'm going to thin out the paint a little more with my medium. Just let some like very loose brush strokes show here. And again, I'm thinning the paint out a lot now. Almost too much. Just dipping it right into my medium. I just want some of these brush strokes to show. Again, thinking of the calligraphy of the picture. And standing back, so at a stage like this, I may think that the painting is done. Uh, so what I usually do, uh, something that usually isn't seen in my other videos because you don't actually see me and the painting, something I usually do is uh, after I've painted what I think is the finished painting, I'll actually uh, take maybe like a 20 minute break. So. I'll be back in another 20 minutes. And so now 20 minutes or so has passed uh, since I've uh, been looking at my painting. So I, I came back and uh, I think taking a little break kind of helped me see some little adjustments that need to be made. Uh, so not really much. I think the painting is kind of acceptable now, I think. So I think I just need a little more of an angle there so let's use the ivory black 
was are uncomfy. So I think I'm just missing an angle right here on the forehead. See that one, two, kind of a little chop here. Barely noticeable. Kind of missing that. Another thing that um, was immediately kind of apparent to me was this is kind of vague. So it might need a little more light. And not much, but just a little more. Maybe that was too much, but meh, that's about it. A little glimpse of light, something existing there. Just aesthetically, I feel like something needed to be there. And with that, that just about wraps up this week's portrait painting demonstration. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that these videos are helping you out. And please let me know what you think about this new camera setup where you can actually see me talking to you while I am creating the painting at the same time. So please just let me know what you think. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.